Hi guys, I'm Big Mike, and like always, I'd like to thank you for being here today. Today we've got Bob from Mirus Futures to talk in depth about Mirus. Uh, some bullet points uh, that are going to be covered today are uh, an overview of Zenfire, um, a new clearing relationship that Mirus has. Uh, Bob's going to talk about the enhanced server hosting solutions that they have, uh, some web-based trading, uh, managed futures, and a bunch of other things. So whether or not you're a, uh, a new trader that's trying to figure out, you know, what brokerage to choose. Uh, this webinar would be good for that. Or if you already have a Mirus account and you're looking to uh, add or expand it, then this webinar would be good for that. Apologize for a little bit of background noise. My dog is trying to bone. Um, as you guys have questions, type them into the questions box. We'll do our best to get everyone's questions answered today. Um, the recording for this webinar will be posted tomorrow in the usual spots. Uh, I want to thank everyone for being here live, but uh, if you are watching this via recording at a later date, uh, do me a favor, if it's on YouTube, hit the, uh, the like button, and if it's on BMT, then give us your feedback. It's a form right below the webinar. All right, guys, here comes Bob from Mirrors Futures. Give me one second. Hey guys, this is Bob with Muris. Um, what to thank um, Mike for having us in the room this afternoon, uh, and everybody that's that's attending here live. Um, just want to make sure that the audio and the the visual is good as well. Yep, we can hear you so just fine, you and see we the, see the slide. Looks good, Bob. Perfect, perfect. Thanks so much. Um, so yeah, again, thanks to Mike for having us here. Uh, you know, over the last couple of years. Uh, we've been working with Mike uh, and certainly have been clued into what uh, what real traders are saying in the forums. And uh, Mike's is a, a one one forum that just offers uh, kind of unparalleled uh, feedback from from real traders. Um, well, so we're really that. happy to be here. Um, and you know, for the yeah. last the last two years, the uh, the traders have ranked both uh, Mirrors Futures as the best brokerage and Zenfire as the best data feed. So I think that uh, the guys like you as well. <laughs> so thanks, Bob. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, thank you for for mentioning that. And and I see a lot of uh, familiar names out there for for the attendees list. So uh, if I've spoken to you in the past, uh, you know, welcome you here today. Uh, really, today is about you know, what you can expect from us as your broker in 2013. And, you know, as Mike mentioned, we're going to cover, cover some of the services that we offer, uh, but go a little more in depth into them. Uh, and, and some of these things might be uh, new to you, uh, but there will be some review as well uh, in, in terms of what the roles of, of each party is. Um, but any time that you have a question, uh, I have the questions window open, feel free to to type that in there, and I'll try to address it as we go throughout today's uh, presentation, and of course be answering questions uh, at the end of the presentation. So why don't we just uh, jump in. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with Mirrors Futures, um, we were founded in 2004. Our principals are Elliot Wickersheimer and Pat Shaughnessy. Uh, Mirus kind of uh, grew our reputation in the first couple years uh, solely on the support and customer service that we were offering to our customers, and we really think of that as our our foray into the markets and and our, our connection with you guys as the traders. Um, and, and at that same time, we were developing uh, a technology which you guys now know as as Zenfire, and that was really uh, at Pat's helm. Um, in 2006, we introduced that solution, and uh, we really uh, continued our efforts to, to build our reputation not only on the, the service and um, customer support side of things, but also on the technology as well. And, and that certainly has resonated uh, throughout the community in that Zenfire can offer uh, the speed and reliability that have uh, previously only been known to institutions. Uh, and so that really uh, put us in the forefront in the minds of, of traders out there. Uh, and 
you know, since that time uh, when we first released that, we've really continued to grow uh, in both of these areas, both in customer service support and, and technology, and it's uh, really continue to be uh, a strong effort on our part to, to provide you guys with um, really the best tools uh, for you guys to effectively manage your accounts. And that's kind of our role as the introducing broker. And um, you know, that's, that's one of the, the ways that I like to, to view us is we provide you with um, the best tools out there to successfully or efficiently manage your trading account. And there's a few different ways that we do that. Um, first, obviously, you guys uh, use the front end software, uh, whether that's the software that you currently find on our website, uh, NinjaTrader, MultiCharts, uh, Scalp Tool, and RTrader, uh, or if you're connecting to Zenfire and your account at Miris uh, through one of these other platforms like Sierra Charts, uh, Inside Edge, uh, Trade Navigator, or Market Delta. Uh, you know, Zenfire is a technology that fits in with a lot of these different front-end front -end softwares, and really, uh, we leave it to these uh, software developers to develop products that, um, you know, fit a, a niche area where, you know, you guys might use, uh, you know, Market Delta or IRT for, um, you know, volume profile or, or footprint charts. Most of our core businesses uh, in the platforms on the left, and that's what a lot of you are familiar with. But you do also have the capability to use some of these that we just don't support in house, or at least not yet. Um, Zenfire is uh, what we refer to as a, a, as a trading engine uh, because it incorporates a lot of different aspects um, of the the solution that you guys might not be aware of. Um, Zenfire uh, is is built in a way that it is um, it's the network connection uh, that you use uh, that you connect to to not only receive pricing data uh, or pricing information from the exchange but also an executing venue that uh, routes orders to the exchanges uh, that we're connected to um, and in addition to that uh, it allows us to do risk management uh, so it, it sent fires an integral part uh, to our risk management solution as well, um, and you know, as I mentioned before, it's it's really um, a solution in terms of its speed and reliability that was only available to institutions, um, large banks, uh, and hedge funds um, prior to to really Miris'ing uh, Miris's release of Zenfire to the retail trader, uh, and. In 2006, when it was released, it really it gave you the opportunity to level the playing field in terms of uh, the low latency connections you've come to expect, uh, and and the order routing um, capabilities that it has, uh, as well as being a, a quick and efficient way for Miris to manage uh, risk in house. Um, and and that continues to be our focus. Uh, and that'll be uh, apparent a little bit later on in the webinar. Some of the other services that you get here at Miris are, are some things that are synonymous with uh, a broker's account. Obviously, uh, Treasury, uh, if you have currency conversions that you'd like to do. Uh, we also have a, an accounts department that can help you through the process of uh, completing the application and getting the account open. Um, and, and you can speak to any of our knowledgeable brokers on that as well. Uh, but in addition, we also have the, the support staff and the, the trade desk. Um, support would be uh, technical support that you get for, uh, for the platforms listed above uh, on the left-hand side, um, and for you know, general connection issues. Uh, the trade desk is available 24 hours uh, whenever markets are traded that you can call in in emergency situations. Um, you know, if you've, if you've lost your connection to the internet uh, or, you know, lost power at home, obviously these are crisis times if you have an open position or orders working in, in the various markets. Um, and, and while we continue to focus on the technology and, and rounding that out a little bit, uh, 
to offer you better solutions, the trading desk is always going to be available to you just if you want some peace of mind. Um, so these are really the, the core services that we offer as an introducing broker. Um, and with any brokerage account at Miris, you also have to establish a clearing relationship. Um, the clearing, uh, clearing relationship uh, is necessary because the, the clearing firms that we work with and, and you, know, you do as well uh, have some pretty uh, you know, major functions in, in terms of the, the back office um, for your account. So uh, besides the initial compliance review that the clearing firm will do for the applications as they come in, uh, they serve uh, a few ongoing uh, parts for, for you as the trader. Uh, first of all, it's the clearing firm that's really responsible for holding your funds. They're held in a segregated uh, account in your name, uh, compliant with the NFA and CFTC. Uh, rules uh, regulating the futures industry. Uh, so the, the accounts are, are segregated in your name uh, and that's where the funds are held. Uh, they also provide the end of day clearing and settlement for, for the trades that you make. Um, you know, the, the trades that you make on uh, the future side are, uh, you know, someone's on the other side of it. It's a net zero game. Uh, it's, you're not trading against a dealing desk, you're not um, trading a, a stock where there's uh, various uh, liquidity uh, pools and executing venues. Uh, it's traded on a centralized exchange and when you buy, someone's on the opposite end to, to sell. Um, so basically the, the clearing firms work with each other to identify who the, who the purchasers and who the sellers were uh, to, to clear and, and settle those trades at the end of the day. Um, in addition to that, you're also going to receive daily, monthly, and year-end statements from uh, the clearing firms. Uh, and, and, and really these are the core uh, core functions that the, the clearing firms are responsible for for any customer of Miris. Now, any questions that you have, you're really bringing that to, to Miris. We are, uh, we are your uh, point of contact for anything related to your account, and that's why we have these various departments that I mentioned in the previous slide um, to, to handle any inquiries that you have. We're, we will work with the clearing firm on your behalf, um, but this is, these are the functions that the clearing firm really uh, has for you. And it, it's a little bit different because we, we did offer our, our own technology, which was Zenfire. Um, you know, customers uh, coming to the futures world uh, in years past typically would want to know, um, you know, are the trades routed to which clearing firm, what does that routing look like? Uh, well, with Zenfire, it, it really, no matter which clearing firm your account is held with at Miris, um, the execution of your trades is all handled on Zenfire's side. So it doesn't really matter who your clearing party is, but we do know that the clearing firms offer some advantages for certain uh, different uh, you know, customers out there. Uh, so as an independent introducing broker, uh, we've We've chosen to work with um, two clearing firms in the past, uh, Dorman Trading and Rosenthal Collins Group. And over the last uh, couple of years, it's really been apparent to us that uh, you know, our customers and, and potential customers, just people that we've been talking to, have, uh, have wanted another relationship. And uh, as of uh, today, you'll see on our, our website that you can now open accounts with RJ O'Brien. Um, so I'll talk about a couple of the advantages that, that RJO has uh, over uh, some of the other clearing firms. Uh, but really what I'd like to start with is, you know, Miris is an, uh, an IIB, uh, an independent introducing broker. And, and we choose to work with the firms that we feel, uh, like I said before, going to offer the best uh, service support, 
offer our customers the best chance for success at such a, a hard, uh, you know, profession. Uh, and we've chosen to work with these firms for, for very specific reasons. Um, and each of the firms that we do work with, we, we feel like we've done a really good job of, of partnering with the right folks uh, to offer a really uh, uh, clean relationship for our, our customers. Um, you know, we've, we've worked with Dorman and, and RCG uh, for a very long time now. RJ O'Brien has been in the business since 1914. Um, you know, RCG's been been around for over uh, 80 years and Dorman for over 40. So they all have very good lengths uh, of service uh, in the industry. Um, Dorman is uh, smaller compared to the other two firms and uh, compared to uh, RJ O'Brien, Rosenthal is also smaller. Uh, to give you a, uh, an understanding of uh, where they sit, uh, Dorman is, uh, has about $141 million in, in assets, uh, RCG $1.7 billion, RJ O'Brien comes in at, at about $4 billion, uh, so they, they know how to manage a lot of customer accounts, uh, and, and really it, it offers the next level for our customers that really we're looking for um, you know, a larger clearing firm. Uh, you know, over the last couple of years, it's certainly been tough with the uh, the black eyes in in the industry uh, from um, from guys guys like Corzine, uh certainly with the MF Global and PFG situations. Really, uh, when it comes to reliability uh, and industry reputation, all three of these firms have tremendous industry reputations. Uh, they are all very conservative firms. Um, you know, I've mentioned this in previous webinars with uh, with uh, BMT um, that all three, uh, following the collapse of MF Global, were were named to uh, as three of the uh, three of the total of six clearing firms to accept MF Global customers after the collapse, uh, and those firms were named directly by the CFTC. Uh, so. You know, in the cases of Dorman and RCG, that really spoke to us uh, in terms of, you know, we, we really, we got it right. We, we chose um, our firms right. We, we knew the partners that, that we wanted, and uh, we kind of got it right. Um, RJ O'Brien uh, also, a very conservative firm, and, and you're going to see that in, uh, in that it doesn't offer... Um, some of the same uh, advantages that Dorman and Rosenthal do in, in terms of um, uh, things like margin requirements. You know, uh, you're definitely going to want to speak to a broker here uh, if you have questions on, on the various margins uh, between each firm. Dorman and Rosenthal, we've set uh, as a pretty good standard. They share the same margin requirements. RJ O'Brien is a little bit more conservative, uh, even further. Uh, so in more volatile markets like uh, like gold and silver or some of the European traded uh, markets like the FDAX and the FESX, FESX you, you might experience that you're, you're going to have higher margin requirements for intraday trading with RJ O'Brien versus um, our other two clearing partners. Um, we've just announced uh, the relationship, so we'll have more resources available on the website in terms of what the margin comparisons look like, uh, but today was the first day that we got them up and, and you can complete the applications uh, for RJO now on the website. And speaking to the uh, uh, to the more conservative nature of RJO, uh, if you are a customer outside of the United States, they're not going to accept an online application. They do require you to complete a uh, a printed application. Um, and, and currently, they uh, they do not work with any customers from uh, from Germany or Russia. Um, so those are two things to note. We have uh, pretty good uh, outstanding relationships with both Dorman and Rosenthal for customers coming to us from, from those locations. Um, so that's probably your best bet at this point. But 
Hey, Bob. Uh, yeah. A lot of people are, are in Canada, and I always see questions about Canada. So, like, uh, Brian was asking, uh, you know, which, pro which clearing firms will accept Canadian residents. Do you have, do you know off the top of your head how it all breaks down? <laughs> right. I do, uh, and you know it's a it's a question that that is often asked, and uh, and certainly you know as someone coming from Canada, you'll see it in in a lot of clearing firms that they don't accept um, you know customers from certain provinces, and each clearing firm is a little bit different uh, in terms of who they accept and who they don't. So uh, one of the the benefits that that RJO provides is um, is that they provide access to um, accounts from British Columbia, uh, and to give you guys the breakdown for each clearing firm, and I'll, I'll go from top down. Uh, Dorman, uh, you can open an account only if you're from Ontario. Uh, Rosenthal Collins Group, uh, they will accept accounts coming from Ontario and Alberta, and then. You know, as I mentioned, the benefit of going with RJO now is that, in addition to Ontario, they accept customers from British Columbia. So we now can can provide a, a solution for three of the the provinces up there, uh, in in our far north. Um, so, you know, it, it's it's really good for us to have that additional um, option for you guys. And I know that it, it's not reaching everybody in, in Canada, uh, but as far as I know, it, it, it's really having to do with um, some of the rules, uh, the provincial rules um, regarding um, U.S. trading accounts uh, in terms right. of uh, soliciting customers. Right. So it, it's really tough, and each clearing firm is a little bit different. So while we're talking about uh, clearing firms, you know, the, the CFTC used to maintain that, that big FCM report, um, you know, each month, and then they stopped doing it in, I think it was November, and the NFA took over. Um, right. I, I, I'm actually trying to find that list right now, but I'll find it, and I'll post a link on the on the, on BMT, but, uh, you know, anyone that's wanting to get an idea of the, you know, the size of these firms or, you know, how much they're managing. Uh, can look at that report and get a get a good idea. And also, you know, everyone should always do the due diligence, right? You can you can look up information on the NFA and the CFTC to make sure that uh, you know who you're working with when it comes to your your broker, because some of them you don't want to work with. <laughs> I wouldn't want to work with at least. Yeah, and and I like to I like to think that uh, you know Miros, like I said before, does a really good job in, in terms of our due diligence, in terms of the partners that we bring to the table. Um, right. But certainly, you know that that is uh, as a self-directed trader, you really want to know where your money's going. Yeah. And certainly, the guys, uh, you know, at, at MF Global and and, and PFG, uh, you know, they yeah. they always thought that uh, yeah. hey, these guys have been around. They they handle a lot of customer funds, and, and they thought that the the money was safe. And and to be honest, in in the Hundred plus years uh, in terms of the, the structure of the clearing firms, uh, nothing has been lost prior to these two situations in a customer segregated funds account. These are the only two sure. known breaches of that. So, but even even breaking it down in, in simpler terms, you know, uh, I get approached by other brokers all the time that that want to be on the site. They want to do webinars. They want to run banner campaigns. Sure. And I say no. Because I don't want the mirror, <laughs> you know. So I, I think it, I think it's important that everyone do some do some homework. Uh, I think Absolutely. there's a lot of a lot of people that uh, are mirrors customers on the forum, and and uh, you guys always do a good job. I see some questions here. Uh, do you want to get into some sure. of these? Or okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at uh, the first one I see uh, that's easily addressable is from Gary, who asks, um, you know, to avoid the risk of one of the clearing firms going bust, uh, should we divide our funds between two or more of of uh, the clearing firms that we offer? Um, you know, it's, I, I mean, very uh, very quickly, you know, diversification is one of the best ways to to avoid risk, and, and any anybody in this industry will tell you that. Uh, never put your eggs in one basket. I think is the term that our mothers used to use. But uh, you know, our the clearing firms that and, and the relationships that we saw them. Uh, 
really provide um, benefits for for certain individuals. You know, obviously, no one from from Russia or, or Germany is going to be able to open an RJO, so they have to be with other one of the other firms. I, you know, we do have a lot of customers that trade in, in multiple clearing firms, um, and we'll get we'll get in a little bit more involved into in terms of diversification. Uh, a little bit later on uh, when we talk about managed futures, but certainly over these different groups, uh, you know, I, I don't see how it could hurt you. Um, the and you're only, the only thing would be that an individual is able to open multiple accounts uh, sure. through Miris, right? Through through absolutely. the different okay, gotcha. Yeah, um, through the different clearing firms, absolutely. The only uh, you know, disadvantage that I, I see is that you wouldn't be able to leverage, um, you know, all of the, f obviously you're playing with the same amount of funds uh, total, but you wouldn't be able to cross margin the accounts. Um, but that, that would be the only drawback that I've, I could foresee there. Um, so it's really up to you. Uh, but, you know, again, the due diligence part is, is something that, you know, it, it's really good on, on your side to, to really know who you're getting involved with. The CFTC report is, is a really good way to do that. Um, one of the things that we look to is, is look for that excess uh, excess net capital. Right. Um, yeah. And so when, when Mike posts that, uh, certainly it's something to check out. I see a question from uh, from Sigmund. He's like, he says, why doesn't uh, RGO like German accounts? <laughs> You know, I, I can't say it's it's such a new relationship. Um, I I can't recall what answer they provided us with, uh, but you know, I know that at least in terms of the the Russian side, um, they really just haven't done it in the past. But we have a really good uh, Russian broker here um, that that has done a really good job with both of our, our current clearing relationships. We're going to try to open up that channel for for RJO as well. Okay. Um, so we're going to continue to work on, on this and, and make it accessible to more people around the world. Um, one of the additional benefits that RJ O'Brien that I haven't uh, has that I haven't touched on yet is access to additional exchanges. Um, as a bigger firm, they, they work with a lot of different uh, providers there. They're going to be able to offer our customers access to additional uh, worldwide exchanges. Uh, we've gotten a lot of um, feedback over the years um, from people around the world that are really looking to trade, uh, you know, Australian exchanges, Singapore, some of these other places uh, that, you know, with our, our two current firms, they don't have access to. Um, down the line, it's it's going to be available uh, through through RJO. Um, and, and so that's that's one of the additional reasons why we chose uh, RJO is that they'll be able to to help us uh, offer uh, more services uh, in terms of uh, trading uh, venues to our clients. Let's see a couple of the others. Um, I, you know, uh, Radu, Alex's uh, questions, uh, just want to cover a couple of them. Uh, do we offer standard technical support and, and a help desk uh, for European markets um, and, and in European times? Uh, you know, we do get a lot of customers from, from Europe. Uh, if you are German speaking, we do have a German broker uh, that you can go through and, and get uh, technical support and help. Um, Go to mirrorsfutures.de uh, for more information on that. Um, and in terms of uh, our technical support hours for, for help with the platforms and SendFire and connections and, and things like that, we're available from 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Uh, for emergency situations, um, you know, for live orders and uh, positions, our emergency trade desk is available 24-7 uh, uh, whenever markets are open. Uh, if it is a, a technical support item, they'll refer you to, to the, the technical support hours. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, you know, one of the... 
uh, follow up to that question, Alex uh, had said that uh, in the BNT forums, he saw that a lot of customers in in Germany were having some issues with uh, with our our trading engine or connecting to our trading engine. Just want to let you guys know that um, you know, unfortunately, um, that was an issue that was localized to um, a German uh, ISP, uh, Deutsche Telekom. Uh, as of two days ago, I believe that the that Deutsche Telekom had resolved the issues that they had, and customers are now experiencing the same Zen fire that they always have. Uh, just want to clear that up is uh, when you talk about um, you know a network, and we're going to be talking about this here um, when we talk about hosting, but when you talk about a network like Zenfire, we can really only control Zenfire. How you get to us, we can't really control that. There's, uh, there's your internet service provider um, locally at your home, and then there might be some additional uh, internet, or there will be some additional internet service providers along the way in the route to get to our network. And we really don't really have control over those um, and so if they are having issues, we can work with them to, to help them identify and resolve the issue, which we did, um, but we really can't, we can't work for them in, in fixing that issue. So I knew that there were some guys overseas that were having some trouble, uh, specifically in Germany, but um, you know, as of a couple days ago, it sounds like it's been resolved. Um, we do offer Eurex currently. Uh, some of the additional exchanges that we offer uh, besides the CME or the ICE uh, NIBOT, so uh, trading of the TF um, and the DX. Uh, also uh, Eurex uh, for, for things like the DAX and, and some of the fixed income products that they have over there like the Boond and the Bobble. Um, let's see. Some of the other questions. Um, CS, he's asking about uh, um, server-side OCOs. I think you're going to be really excited uh, about what we have to talk about a little bit later on. And then lastly, uh, for right now, Vance, how do we avoid a PFG and MF Global problem? You know, I think Mike really hit the nail on the head earlier when when he said that you really have to do the due diligence. And the only problem there is, you know, as much due diligence as we do as, as a brokerage firm and as as you do as, as a customer of, of Muris and, you know, ultimately a customer of the clearing firms are that you can only do so much. And... Uh, uh, in, in terms of your due diligence, um, you know, one of the, I think the, the conservative natures of our firms, and not only that, when you couple it with how transparent they've been since the, the PFG and MF Global uh, scandals, um, the, the firms that we uh, work with are really uh, well positioned uh, to to give you the info that, that you would really want as somebody considering an account. Um, it is, uh, especially with the transparency, I, I know that Dorman and Rosenthal uh, both put on their uh, website links to their monthly um, monthly reports about where where their funds are, um, you know, invested uh, in the overnight. Um, and, I, you know, you really have to to take a little bit of a leap of effort, uh, leap of faith, uh, to to say, you know, I believe you. Obviously, in the case of of PFG, as much as you wanted to believe, they were doing some some stuff that they shouldn't have. Um, and I think that we can only do so much. Um, but I'll leave that to you, and and I'll just uh, go ahead and and hope to to move on. Um, I, I, I do want to say this, as somebody that's been here with Miris for the last uh, four plus years, I know that our dedication is to you as the customer. And, you know, like I said before, when we put the tools in front of you that we think are, are the best chances for you to succeed, I really believe that. Um, I, 
I really feel that you know the culture of of Muris uh, working with with Pat and Elliot directly and and everybody else in the firm really we're we're dedicated to to you as a customer uh, and uh, we wouldn't want you to to be in a position where um, you were left hanging so I'll, I'll just leave it at, at that uh, so if there's more questions about uh, the new clearing relationships, uh, certainly I can address those you know, after the presentation, but also know that you can get in touch with our new accounts uh, department as well as the brokers here uh, at Muris, and they can help um, answer some of the questions that, that you might have. Um, for now, I'd like to move on to our co-location services. And you know, I was speaking a little bit of uh, one of the ways that that Zenfire has set itself apart from the others uh, in terms of a technology, and when it came out in 2006, it was really, it, really we were the first um, uh, first solution available to retail traders that was co-located uh, with the exchange. So what does that mean? Uh, Zenfire was. Uh, basically in the, the same location as, uh, as the exchange. And uh, for that reason, and, and for a number of other reasons, but one thing was that we had lower latencies between the, the exchange and, and our servers uh, and could offer a, a faster solution. Uh, that's only part of the secret sauce. And to be honest, it, it's, it, it's not even uh, part of it these days because everybody's co-located now. Um, what I'm going to do is explain how uh, how we've enhanced our hosting solutions, um, and, and really that's that's what I'm talking about uh, today is hosting. Um, so, what co-location allows you to do is become a part of our network. You get to, to be a part of our network and, and eliminate some of the um, some of the other things out there that, that are risks as a, an electronic trader, um, so that you can have uh, better reliability and faster connections to the exchange to run your systems. Um, so when you think about um, what a trader at home does. You've got. Can you guys see my cursor? Just, uh, yes. Yes, Mike, we can. Can answer. Okay. Perfect. Um, so when we think about a traditional way that someone connects to the exchange, we we have the trader over here on the left, and, and these are are you guys connecting from from your home location, and we have the exchange over here on the right. Um, you guys are getting market data from from the exchange, it's going through our ticker plant, through through the, the security levels at the exchange, uh, through the the vast internet, which is really underrepresented in this uh, in this image. Uh, if if we really could uh, do this to the size that it should be, you know, the internet would be blown up. I, I don't even know how, much, how many times it would be blown up on, on this scale, but this would be the you know 95 percent, uh, 99 percent uh, in terms of the transit time to get to you. Um, and along with that also comes those additional points of failure. As I mentioned, when you connect back, let's say that you you receive the market data as the trader over here, you you click buy or sell, you found a you know a level that you like and you you want to get into the game uh, your order travels back through the internet goes through the security levels through the order plant and to the exchange when when we talk about the percentage times uh, in terms of the, the just the transit alone the internet of course is where 99 percent of that transit time is going to come from 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 here to here and from here to here uh, in, in terms of the exchange to, to our servers, we measure that in microseconds. It's sub-millisecond. Um, when you get to the data center and you get to the security levels, it's, it's, it's going to be you know, about five milliseconds each way. Um, so when you look at somebody connecting from you know, 
California. Um, they might be at 50 to 70 milliseconds overall. Um, someone at, in Chicago might be less than that. They could be, you know, 30 or, or 50. Yeah. Uh, and Bob, if I could from, just add just a little uh, bit here. So Europe might be 150. Go ahead. Uh, just to make sure people are properly visualizing it, right? So like everything on the right-hand side where it says data center, that's all in the same physical building. And then everything on the left, if you can imagine, like I'm in Dallas, right? So it's a, it's a long way from me to Chicago. And right. if you, if you, in technical terms, if you do a trace route on your connection, I can see like 10 or 12 or maybe 15 hops. So that means I have to go through 10 to 15 routers or gateways uh, in order to get to the data center for, for me at my house. Now, any one of those could cause problems. Any one of those could maybe be overutilized. Uh, you know, at certain times of day, they're dealing with Netflix traffic and YouTube traffic and everything else. Uh, right. And, it, you know, every little thing can cause a problem or a packet to be dropped or some type of a delay, right? And just physically yeah. the speed of light. There's always going to be <laughs> a delay, right? So I just want to make sure so everyone further, visualizes. Right. So the further away absolutely. you are, the bigger the latency, even under ideal bigger the latency, just based on the, the speed of light using the fiber connections and, and things like that. But then, you know, as Mike said, uh, each additional hop is an additional point that might fail. Um, and really, when we talk about hosting solutions, we're really trying to give you the most reliability uh, and the fastest connection possible. So we eliminate all of this uh, when, when you host with us. Um, one of the things that, that we've done as a network, I, I've talked about uh, you know, our continued efforts for um, uh, technology is maybe about a year ago, a, a little bit more, uh, and this doesn't really have to do with hosting at all, but uh, we, we established uh, a pop in, uh, in Amsterdam. And what that meant was that anybody connecting to us from Europe and, and some of the Middle East that was going through Europe to connect to us, once they got to London, they weren't competing with any outside traffic to get to us. At that point, we would consider that they were actually part of our network. Um, there, there were some additional points or additional hops that they had to go through, but they weren't competing for bandwidth to get overseas. Uh, and prior to this, you know, Mike uh, mentioned Netflix. You'd get a lot of traffic from uh, from sites like that in, in Europe and you know as someone trading from Europe uh, or, or somewhere over there that, that used the Europe path to get to us um, that added a lot of latency just by establishing that that additional pop in Amsterdam we cut latency in half uh, and, and maybe more so so you know hosting solutions aside we do have a continued uh, focus on on technology and, and we do have plans to offer additional hops in the future uh, so that you don't have to share uh, traffic with with anybody else it's dedicated for Sendfire customers or, or our network customers only so uh, we continue to do that um, so when we talk about hosting we're really talking about traders that want to eliminate these outside risks. Uh, and it's really best suited for, for people that are automated. Um, because when you're automated, you can get the full advantage of the co-location. Um, and, and I'll talk about that here in, in a few, few minutes. Uh, so one, we eliminate the risks from trading from home. Those are the power outages, uh, your local ISP, you know, it, it could be one of Mike's three dogs uh, tripping a, a router uh, wire <laughs> or a, a network connection at home. Those are the type of risks that, that you get just from being at home. In addition to that, we cut out uh, the internet and um, the security of um, the data center. And the, the internet is the main point here. Uh, you know, it, it eliminates all those additional points of failure in terms of the hops that you have to go through, all the things that are outside your hands, outside our hands. Uh, we place you directly in, uh, in our network. You actually, uh, you know, I say here, you leverage our NN10 gigabyte network. Um, 
you you actually become a part of the the Zenfire solution or, or the network solution at that point. Um, and, and you do get placed beyond the security levels that we have at the, the data center, uh, being the, the DMZ and the firewall. And in addition to, to eliminating that point of failure, it does shave uh, a few milliseconds off some transit times for both market data and order execution. Um, one of the key things here is that uh, all of your resources are dedicated. And what I mean by that is we use what we call virtual machines. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not a new solution, but our solution is a little bit different than solutions that you may find, uh, you know, with, with some of the other providers out there. We're really a professional grade solution. Um, in addition to, uh, uh, you know, taking out uh, these risks and, and actually making you part of our network, which eliminates some additional points of, of failure, um, we use only tier one network providers. We use the best hardware. Um, and we've, in terms of the new hosting solutions that uh, you can find currently on our website, we've made some improvements to the way that we're using the hardware. Uh, we're using redundant disk arrays uh, so that if your dedicated uh, machine should somehow fail, uh, the image of that is automatically uh, popped up on another uh, location. Uh, so that you can immediately get in and access your, your virtual machine as if nothing had happened. And you get the same dedicated resources on, on that, you know, failover type situation. Um, we've, uh, we've really dedicated it so that um, you, you eliminate all that noise out there. You eliminate those, those, uh, those places where you don't have control over, we don't have control over it. And you really get to what it is that, that your strategy does, and, and that's run. Uh, it, like I said, you can leverage our 10 gigabyte network to, to access market data, um, and in that way, Zenfire kind of works both as a trading engine and as a data vendor uh, in terms of how the the ticks are received and shown. Um, so for both systematic traders and algorithmic traders, uh, it provides a really good solution. Um, and I know that a lot of this stuff might be, um, you know, if you're not a, a systems developer, uh, might not be in your wheelhouse. But for the systems developers that have joined us, this stuff is really important. Um, and then not only you get the reliability, it's, it's more of the, um, the speed of execution. When you see that signal, how fast can you get to market? Well, we can't tell you how fast you're going to be filled, but we can tell you that the the order is going to get there in less than a, a millisecond. When the exchange accepts that, um, it can depend on the order type. Uh, there's some additional things that, that plays into it, but uh, really we're going to get you there as fast as any, any solution out there or faster. Um, so I just wanted to to give you guys, this is a, a screen capture that I did on one of our virtual machines. And you can see, you know, the look and feel of the thing is really no different than, you know, what your home computer is. I've just got uh, an instance of NinjaTrader running. It's running some sample strategies up there, uh, the ones that came with NinjaTrader. You can see how well they performed. But uh, what it is is really providing you with um, dedicated resources in terms of the, the software and hardware that we use. Um, you don't share that those resources with any of our other virtual machine users, which it, uh, for, for some competitors that might be a, a differentiator uh, where we dedicate the resources to you only. Uh, what someone does on their virtual machine isn't going to impact you. If theirs fails for some reason, it's not going to impact you. Um, if if your uh, machine is, is or if somebody else else's machine is using you know all the RAM that they have access to, they can no way steal the RAM from your virtual machine and start using it uh, for for their solution. Uh, and those types of shared uh, resources is with what you get with a lot of other solutions that are out there. So we we really want to make sure that 
everything is dedicated and tailored towards the resources that you need. We have two different packages that are available. We have the information on our website for those packages, but we also offer um, you know, customizable. If those don't suit what you're doing and you need something, uh, we can do that for you as well. Um, you know, when I talk about the, the hardware and, and using redundant disk arrays, the virtual machine solution provides a benefit uh, over and above a dedicated server in that instance uh, because you can le leverage um, the way that we you know, kind of set up these virtual machines for that automatic failover uh, versus if you had a dedicated um, server somewhere. Uh, it doesn't have that capability. Hey, Bob. Uh, um, yeah. I, I just want to mention real quick, we're talking about redundancy and everything. I, I'm actually, we have some really bad weather here in Dallas. and I have UPSs and backed up equipment here, but if my internet goes down, the webinar should keep going. I just won't be here. I just want to make you aware. <laughs> so really this kind of that. yeah, this kind of stuff happens, you know, during the day too. So that's one of the reasons that uh, you know I have a server in Chicago for the trading from. But anyway, uh, if that Very happens, nice. the webinar should keep going. But it'll explain why I'm no longer here. <laughs> Sounds good. I appreciate the heads up. Um, so. These these are just some of the basics uh, there, and, and I know that you know that this may not have really affected everybody that, that came to the webinar, but it is um, you know something to keep in mind. Uh, you know, as automated trading becomes uh, more prevalent, uh, you know, in the trading community, um, if you need to take the next step uh, to get a, an extremely reliable solution you're not going to find anything more reliable than our virtual machines. Uh, and, you know, in terms of speed, you really can't, you really can't beat it. So it's, uh, it's something that, that you may want to consider if you are a systems developer or have thought about uh, developing an automated system. Um, not to say that it can't provide some benefits for, for folks that aren't uh, fully automated. Uh, but that's really just the the crowd that it's uh, truly most beneficial for. Mike, did you see any questions in here pertaining to this service? Uh, yes, we have several questions. Uh, can you list any other of the points of presence, the pops? Do you have them in any other locations? Uh, we do, but I I don't know them offhand, um, so I'd have to to okay. work on that for you. Uh, Let's see. Which uh, Noah has a question: Is there a trial of some sort available for the colo? Uh, no, no, tr no trial uh, that's available. Although you can cancel within a, a limited amount of time, yeah. um, and, and we do require a, a quarterly commitment. Uh, he also asked about the percentage uptime. Um, you know, we're we're running at. I mean, if you can call it hundred percent, we're. We're over ninety nine percent. Nine nines. <laughs> yeah. Ninety nine percent. Okay. So uh, see, Gary is talking about the improved latency and fuel speed compared to a person on the West Coast. It's going to be it's going to be big because yeah. Basically, if you picture it like if if everyone in all the states between nearest a server and you, if they're trying to enter that position, okay. So it's not just retail traders, but it's any hedge funds or whatever that. If they're, if they're operating out of some place other than Aurora, then they're all going to be in front of you, <laughs> right? So the, the speed advantage is pretty big whenever you co-locate. Right, and that doesn't speak to fill times, obviously. That, that is going to depend on, you know, the, the order types that you use and, and the way that you enter and exit the market. But sure. um, in terms of just uh, latencies to and from, uh, we're operating on the, the microsecond level. Um, and, you know, it is a, a tailored solution for, for professionals, but that's not to say that it doesn't offer advantages to, uh, to the retail guys as well. Uh, we feel that it's um, competitively priced for uh, the type of solution that it is. We know that we're not the cheapest out there. I did see some, uh, uh, some cost quotes uh, question come in. and. Really, it's it's the hardware and the the network that you leverage, uh, and the the you know the tier one providers that we use that 
you really get the the full full benefits of all of that with the solution. And so, you know, that that does come at a cost, uh, and it, it does also provide some added uh, benefits if if you choose to co-locate elsewhere. Um, so keep that in mind. We're, we're competitively cost. You know, we have packages starting at uh, three to five hundred dollars uh, a month, and again, it is paid qu quarterly. Um, and, and like I said, we know we're not the cheapest solution out there, but you really can't beat the term terms of our reliability and uh, the, the network that you leverage. Um, when one other thing um, that you would want to consider uh, is that our new solution provides us uh, with some some pretty cool cool things the way that we're running these now. Uh, I said that it's enhancement over our, our former hosting solution and you can see all this information on the site right now but um, we have what we've um, uh, the way that we've set it up is such that we can offer more more support for it. Um, so if you have issues with Ninja Trader, if you can't access, if you accidentally shut off the the connection uh, for some reason and you couldn't connect, it doesn't mean that the the VM is down. It just means that something may have happened to to restrict access to it. Um, we, can, we can address those issues a lot more efficiently now um, with a lot more, uh, a wide range of tools. And in addition, uh, the way that we have it uh, is such that you will be able to use a multiple monitor setup and have uh, additional uh, people connecting to the same virtual machine all at one time. And at the same time that we're doing that, we enhance the security around these as well. So it's, uh, we really did make some, some big enhancements over the, the previous solution uh, in terms of uh, uh, security and uh, what you can do in terms of how you visualize the, the virtual machine uh, and that you will be able to use multiple monitors. And Bob, I, I don't think it was uh, mentioned, but I know on the forum, you know, a lot of people, sorry about the noise, a lot of people use these, uh, let's say that they, you know, they're wor at work during the day, uh, they can monitor their strategy or their charts or whatever, you know, from one central location, or maybe they, their computer at home is shared between them and their wife and their kids or whatever. They sure. don't have to worry about it. So it's it's always running. It's always that. there. They can get to it from anywhere. In fact, there's some applications even for tablets, right, or phones. I was going to just mention that. I was yeah. going to say not only, you know, your home, but uh, you can do it uh, from a tablet. You can do it from an iPhone. Uh, so and an Android phone, but, you know, the point is that you'd be able to access uh, that basic, it's basically a computer uh, that you're running. It, like I said, it's no different than, you know, what you run at home except where it's physically located and, and how it's set up and, and things like that. But, uh, you know, certainly they have applications for the tabs and the uh, the mobile devices that, that you can access this and just check in on it when you have some time. Uh, you know, we certainly encourage you to, to watch it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thank you for bringing that up as well. But it should always be running, and like I said, we boast over a 99% uptime. Um, so, that being said, that's that's a brief introduction to the, to the solution. I'd be happy to speak with anybody about that if it's something that they see the benefits in and, and you know, want to explore that. Um, you can contact uh, or reach out to me directly. Um, why don't we go to probably our most, um, one of the most exciting uh, things that I have to present for you today, and that is uh, Miris Trader. Uh, Miris Trader is a web and mobile-based solution that powers any device uh, that connects to the internet. Um, it was built in the latest uh, HTML5, uh, so you can access it from uh, Android or iOS devices, uh, as well as from Google Chrome on your computer. Um, it it is really a, a slick little application, and uh, it is uh, an independent trading platform. Uh, we are going to be offering it when it's available, uh, starting in, in the second quarter, um, as a companion to Ninja Trader. 
Uh, so you'll be able to use, um, if you trade with NinjaTrader, you'll be able to use the web uh, uh, or mobile platform to, to manage and, and monitor your positions. Uh, it's, it's built on uh, a, a new proprietary uh, trading engine, um, and it's extremely fast. One of the additional benefits that it has is server-side OCOs. I know that there was at least one question about that earlier. Um, whether you're going to be placing uh, the OCOs in NinjaTrader or in the web-based platform, um, you will be able to uh, try to get this little video to work here. Um, you'll be able to use server-side OCOs. And if you are in, intending on using uh, the platform with NinjaTrader, uh, the initial entry order uh, will not have the, the server-side functionality. So if you attach an ATM strategy, and for those of you Ninja users out there, you know what an ATM strategy is. If you attach an ATM strategy uh, to an entry order, the entry order has to be filled first, but then the OCOs um, are are attached. So if you have a profit target and a stop loss out there, those are server side uh, OCOs. Uh, if we can't get this to work, I'll uh, I'll just try to. Uh, I'll bring my other screen on board and I can give you a sneak peek at it. Um, but that's that's the server-side OCO functionality of it. So that means if you get filled on your entry with Ninja, uh, you know, it's it's not a set it and forget it. I hate, I hate you know, I hate that term. Uh, you know, we have a lot of customers asking about that so that it, they can feel comfortable about leaving their position. We always recommend that you monitor your positions. Um, but it, it will have that ability to, uh, where if your profit target uh, gets filled and you lose your connection at home for some reason, you know, the, the stop loss out there is, is still going to be canceled um, when you get filled on the profit target or vice versa. Uh, so that's, that's probably one of the biggest advantages. It's something that we get, uh, you know, constantly asked about and we have for, for years, and through this new proprietary um, trading engine, we'll be able to accomplish that. Uh, and the functionality is just going to continue to improve with it as well. Um, one of the, the other advantages that it has is that since it is a mobile solution, um, it's a, compatible on a Mac. If you're running Google Chrome on your, your uh, you know, your Mac Mini or your i Gosh, I don't even know what they have out there anymore. MacBook Pros, like any of those, you can use and log in to, um, to this platform and, and use it standalone. Uh, NinjaTrader is still only going to be available on, on uh, PCs, but this platform is available on any basic device that, that connects to the Internet. Um, and, and again, uh, it's going to utilize that uh, expanding exchange connectivity uh, when we have that available. So we're uh, we're really excited about it because this is the the solution of the future, uh, basically. And uh, we really couldn't be more excited about it. It's uh, it, it's something that we've wanted to be able to offer um, in, in the past, and, and we're really close to getting to the point where we can offer it to you. We're currently in beta on it, um, and uh, starting in, in the second quarter uh, of this year, it will be available to current Miris customers. So you would have to be a current uh, customer of Miris Futures in order to, uh, to access it at its first release. And uh, furthermore, it would you would have to have an account at Dorman. So if you're a, a current Mirrors customer, that uh, that may mean something to you. If you don't have an account yet with us, uh, you know, if, and you want to take advantage of some of these things that provides you with other advantages, um, certainly something to, to think about before the second quarter. 
the markets are closed, but I'll uh, since I can't get this YouTube video to work, which I apologize about, I'll just uh, bring over from from my other screen um, an instance of it, and I just messed that up. All right. I'll get this. So this is the, you know, just a sneak peek at the new platform. Um, and you can see it, it offers uh, depth of market windows, some charting capabilities. It also has a, a, a quote board. You can get a, a time and sales window. Um, we're like I said, we're currently in beta on this uh, and, and poised to release it in second quarter. But you know, it's it's extremely intuitive. Uh, so it it thinks the way that you think as a trader. Um, you don't really have to figure out what the best way is to place a uh, you know a limit order or a stop order. It's it's just very intuitive uh, and really flexible in in terms of what you can do with it. Um, you can maximize uh, windows. Uh, there's, it, it's just incredibly uh, um, incredibly uh, dynamic in that way. Um, so that's something to to take note of. Uh, if, I'll get the the presentation going again. Um, do we have any questions about uh, the platform? I'd, I'd be happy to answer those now too. Let's, get, uh, let's read through some of these. Yeah, I see some questions. How much does it cost? Um, so it's going to be available at no cost to to those customers, uh, to our customers. Um, we'll have a, a place on our website that you can log in. Uh, and just use it uh, at no cost to you. And just to clarify, this uh, if you're running NinjaTrader or you're running you know, co-location strategy or whatever, you could still use this simply as a monitoring tool no matter where you're at, right? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. No matter where you're at, you'll be able to log in um, and and check out the, the positions and orders that you have working. Even if you just wanted to check in on the the current markets, like I said, it's incredibly fast. Um, you can just use the quote board, uh, check in. It's kind of a cool thing to share with uh, a buddy of yours. Oh, did you see what happened in the the YM? Oh, here it is. I like to do that in the airports. <laughs> um, <laughs> I see people asking for, if they can get in on get in on the beta it. or not. <laughs> um, right now, uh, you know. Not really. Uh, it's it's closed uh, for the beta, but um, you know we do have uh, a number of users out there that are are connecting to it and trading in a simulated account. It is uh, being used for um, for that at the moment, and uh, we're going to finalize some of the testing with NinjaTrader um, before we we do the final release here in the second quarter. Um, and again, it it really is only going to be available. Uh, as a companion for Ninja Trader, although it can be used on its own uh, as well. So, okay, and I see people asking, and just to clarify, so you have Ninja Trader open and Mirrors Trader open. They can mm -hmm. they coexist, right? Right. Okay. And uh, dormant only. Any any plans to expand that? Absolutely, uh, and and really, that's that's. It's coming down to the um, to the risk management side and getting getting it approved by the other clearing firms, and we hope to have that shortly after um, we have it approved at Doran. So uh, it it will be available. Um, we would expect uh, for all three clearing firms at least by uh, by the end of the second quarter, and we would hope much sooner than that. Great, awesome. Well, it looked it looked really great, and I love the fact. That it's uh, just simple HTML5, no flash. I'm assuming, so it'll work on anything. So that's awesome. Yep, I, I've been using it on my iPhone for a, a number of months now. 
Um, it's great. Yeah, so it's uh, we're really excited about this, and I I don't want to um, you know kill the excitement by by saying oh you have to wait another couple months, but um, we're excited about this for a number of reasons, and, and mainly the we want to provide you guys with again better tools for you to effectively manage your trades, and you know the the server side OCOs has been one that uh, you know I know. You know, Ninja Trader has been looking at for a long time, and, and who they could could work with on that. Uh, it's it, it's all coming to fruition here uh, very shortly, and uh, you know that particular advantage that it offers is is right. one that um, we think is going to be the most valuable. I see some questions. So uh, let's say that that you know the that they're in a position in Ninja Trader, right? right. And all of a sudden, something happens. Um, they can use their phone or their tablet to mm -hmm. close out that position or manage that position. Is that absolutely okay? Yep. Um, so, like I said, it can be used as a companion if you start a position in Ninja Trader and, and maybe your computer—I don't know—maybe you're using XP still and it, and it freezes up. Uh, you don't have the resources behind it to run Ninja Trader uh, properly. You can use uh, this as a way to. Um, to exit positions, manage your positions, move orders, um, but it, it it can also be used as a standalone uh, platform as well. Um, you know the charting is very basic, uh, and that's where I think that the compatibility with Ninja Trader is going to be really uh, kind of a neat kind of um, symbiotic relationship, so to speak. Um, but if if you did want to use it just on its own, uh, it's certainly uh, capable of doing that as well. Any any other questions that you saw that that you'd want me to address? I, uh, just as they come in, it's there's a couple questions on what kind of studies are available. I mean, we're we're already wanting to load up yeah. indicators on charts and everything, <laughs> <laughs> so. I don't know you know, if you're... at the beginning, it's it, the charting's going to be very, uh, very basic, uh, and you know, as I mentioned, we're we're excited to get this and make it available to you as a as a compatible uh, solution to to Ninja Trader, where you can do almost unlimited things in the charts. Um, but you know, as time goes on, not just on the charting, but uh, for account management purposes and uh, you know, just managing. Uh, you know, trades as well as you know other items on your account. Um, it, it's it's going to have additional features that aren't available uh, up at front, and we'll continue to add uh, to it over over the months and, and years to come. Right, that's great. I always see a, a never-ending number of requests for mobile connectivity. Uh, right. So I think this will right. be really fantastic. Good job. You know, and and one of the other. Um, Things about that is as we add the uh, the capabilities and, and functionality, or or we have to do updates for one reason or another, it doesn't require another download. It doesn't require you to download anything new. It doesn't require you to um, to seek out when um, you know updates are available. It's just going to update any time that you log in. Um, so you'll immediately have access to any changes that we have um, coming along down the road. Um, so I guess you know if if more questions come up uh, that that uh, you want me to address, uh, I can do so after the rest of the presentation. But, but just want to run through the the managed futures programs a, a little bit. Um, we're really excited about this portion of our our business. Um, you know we've we've offered managed futures through uh, Dorman and RCG for a long time now, uh, and really they have access to a lot of different. Um, uh, programs that are available uh, they kind of you know give you give you the gambit of anything that you want if it's a CTA we can connect you to them um, we recently hired Dwayne Paul uh, he is a, a 21 year industry veteran uh, he actually um, moved here from Canada to, to become part of our team here at, at Miris he got started uh, doing options um, Risk valuation uh, with uh, a Merrill Lynch group in Canada, uh, and 
prior to joining Miris, uh, was at Dorman Trading uh, as their director of uh, managed futures. Um, one of the things that, that Dwayne is, is doing for us is, um, and, and what he has done in the past already, is worked with a lot of these CTAs and, and really built um, built a portfolio of CTA programs that uh, he has identified that, that can offer a really good value to our customers. And uh, you know, as you can see here, uh, managed futures programs, and to give you a little bit of a background here, managed futures are run by commodity trading advisors or exempt commodity trading advisors registered with the NFA. Uh, so they are, they are professional advisors that, that execute strategies on their customers' behalves. Um, we currently have 17 programs available. Um, Dwayne has done his due diligence on who the, the CTAs are, uh, what programs are out there, and what programs he sees fit to, to make available uh, to our customers. And um, that's not saying that if you're interested in something that's available in the RCG or Dorman or soon to be RJO databases that we wouldn't be able to provide access to it. These are just the programs that, that we find the most value in. Similar, similar to the way that we do our due diligence on uh, the partners, uh, the clearing partners, he's done his due diligence on the CTAs and identified ones um, that, that really is going to add value. Um, he does a lot of analysis uh, in, in, into the different programs, and you can find all of that uh, basic information on our website. Um, one of the things is, uh, and, and why we see this as such a, a, a big area for our customers, is that a lot of times, uh, you know, first of all, a, a lot of people aren't even aware of you know, professionally managed CTA programs uh, when they come to Miris as a self-directed trader. And to be honest, a majority of the, the people that we currently have in our programs have taken a portion of their self-directed funds and split it out uh, with uh, you know, a professional money manager, uh, a CTA. And we talked about diversification uh, earlier. CTAs, if you want to be in futures as a way to, you know, everybody talks about the, the non-correlated results uh, that you get with a managed futures program. Certainly, as a self-directed trader, um, you know, your, your results aren't going to correlate necessarily uh, with the, um, the broad indexes over there uh, or into any individual stocks unless you have a certain type of strategy. Um, over the years, you know, Manage has, has come to represent something that's not correlated to, um, to the overall broader indexes and uh, overall uh, individual stocks. Uh, and you can see that in years like 2008 and 2009 when the, when the markets were primarily down, a lot of CTA programs uh, did very well years. Uh, so it's a great way to hedge uh, against uh, your overall portfolio where you might have most of your money invested in uh, stocks and bonds uh, and you're just kind of doing trading either for fun or, or as a profession, uh, but CTA programs are a way to have a professionally managed um, a program as part of your overall portfolio uh, and in, I, in a way that, that can add Sorry. value to your account. I see a couple questions. Yeah. Uh, Gary's asking about how to choose the appropriate level of risk. So is there like some type of prospectus or how how does a person decide, you know, which program to choose? Sure. Uh, any, and, and I'll discuss that here in a couple minutes, but the research that you'll find available on our website um, not only shows performance results, but it also has, uh, you know, a whole bunch of you know, various analysis, ways that uh, not only Miris, but the, the wider market analyze uh, these um, strategies uh, run by these CTAs. And you're going to see a whole lot of, uh, of different analytics there that, that Dwayne has done. Uh, and he can uh, speak to you uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, to kind of assess what your, um, you know, risks and rewards are uh, in, in terms of your uh, uh, 
kind of goals for the program. Right. Um, and not only do that, but do one-on-one -on -one portfolio analysis. Take a look at, at what your holdings are in stocks and bonds and Is there... see which programs might correlate okay. well with those. Is there any type of uh, minimum investment? Yeah, each one has a, a minimum investment. We work with programs that have minimum starting at I think ten or fifteen thousand dollars, all the way up to five million dollars. Um, so certainly, there's there's a level there for for really anybody. Um, and now, would this be up. considered like a separate account or yeah, I mean, any any account uh, that you? Uh, Anytime you want to provide uh, access to a, a CTA program, you have to give power of attorney over to the, the CTA to, to trade the account. So it would, if you wanted to, to have a self-directed and a, a, a CTA account, the CTA account would have to be as a, set up as a separate account with Maris. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you know, it's it's... We really feel that people have really taken uh, a look at the, uh, the managed futures uh, that are out there and, and really seen value as a, as a sector to add as, as part of their overall portfolio. And we can just see that in, in terms of you know, its growth over the last uh, 10, 11 years. Um, you know, in 2001, in terms of assets under management and CTA programs, you saw um, a cap at 41 billion, and that's grown to over 314 uh, in in two, 2011. So, a lot of folks are seeing the value that it can add as a, a non-correlated asset class, uh, and we'll, we'll use it just to to hedge against their their overall portfolio uh, results. But it is a, a good way to to add value as well. Um, and you know, one of the ways that that we're really excited about Dwayne uh, specifically is that he has a really good focus on education. In fact, at the time that we're doing this webinar, he's doing a webinar uh, as well, uh, talking about some of the, uh, you know, the, the programs that we offer. But he's done webinars for, for our customers in the past, and he just uh, exudes knowledge. And uh, he's a really good resource, and he makes himself available to you uh, to sit down and, and uh, do a one-on-one -on -one portfolio analysis. Um, so he can do that portfolio planning with you. Um, in the past, he's done webinars uh, with other CTAs that, that we feature on our site uh, where it's kind of a, a roundtable discussion about uh, not only their individual um, you know, programs, but uh, Basically, the the industry and, and the way that these these programs work, uh, you know, as as part of an overall um, portfolio. And so, like I said, his real big focus is on on education, and you know, that's only one of the reasons why we're really excited about having Dwayne come on board with us. Um, but I really encourage anybody that is. Um, it wants to be in the the future sector, um, and we really encourage anybody that that's coming to us as a self directed trader to really consider managed uh, futures as a way to um, as a way to to continuously be involved in in this uh, asset class. Um, so. You know, I'm I'm up for for questions now about this specific uh, product. I know that a lot of uh, you guys out there are self-directed traders, um, and maybe not have considered managed futures in the past. Um, but if you do have any questions, uh, I, I can address them now. Or if you want to take a look at some of the resources that we have available to you online, check out some of our archived webinars. Um, if you're interested in, in taking a, a look at, at some of the uh, uh, fact sheets on any one of these uh, CTAs, we have them available in our Managed Future section on our website. Is, is each of the... Mike, did you see anything in there? Um, I think we covered most of them, but I, I have a question. So okay. let's say I choose sure. one of the 17 programs. Right. Is that, I mean, how... You know, I, I like to diversify, and I just like to better understand the di diversification within that one 
program? Is it trading one product? Is it trading ten? Really, each CTA is a little bit different, and, and that's something that uh, you'll see when you start to research some of these uh, available programs is uh, some might be utilizing one strategy over a basket of instruments um, and non-correlated instruments. You know, they're trading bonds versus equities. Maybe they're trading... Um, Ags, uh, they could be using options uh, as well. So uh, these programs are, are set up based on the expertise of um, you know whoever is running them. Uh, I know that one of the programs that we offer is he kind of has a unique background. Um, he was a I guess like a, a purchasing uh, chief officer at at. Uh, a big candy company here in the, the states, and his his job basically was to hedge, uh, you know, the the raw materials that went into the candies that they they made um, using uh, options and, and futures. And after he retired from that job, he built a you know a, a portfolio um, based on on some of the things that he learned as uh, you know a corporate hedger. Um, so, there's there's guys that have backgrounds like that. There's other people um, that have uh, more of a background in just algorithmic trading. So each each program is a little bit unique. Uh, some programs may limit themselves to to one or just a couple markets. Uh, some may choose to to venture out into a lot of different markets, uh, and that's really uh, where the one on one consultations with with Dwayne is, is right. going to come in handy. Where you can speak to him; he knows them inside and out, and knows the managers as well. Okay, so um, like I already have a Maris account, so I would just do I have to like go through some type of an application process, or what what's involved to get the second account set up for the CTA? Sure. It really depends on uh, the way that you want to um, to run the, the account. If if it's going to be under the same account as you, let's say you have an individual account or a joint account with us, you can simply um, do an, individ, uh, an additional account request form, which is a one-page document, to open an additional account uh, and then fill out the uh, the DDoC that each CTA program has, uh, and you can request that from Dwayne uh, to get the account open and uh, ready for trading. Um, you can take funds from you know your original account, or you can fund it separately. It's up to you. Okay. If if you wanted to trade it through something like an IRA account, uh, you know, or a trust account, generally speaking, those uh, have to be set up. Uh, you would have to go through the application process again, just the online application, but everything else would be the same. Okay. And it's, um, you mentioned that, you know, different minimums for different programs, but is there any type of a minimum time commitment? Or can you? Yeah, you know, not really. Uh, I would say that at, at a minimum, um, it, it Based on how the DDoC is structured, uh, if the, the management fees are, are taken on a, a quarterly basis or a monthly basis, uh, and that might be unique to, to each one, I would generally think that uh, a quarterly uh, commitment is required. These, these programs are set up as more as of a, a long-term investment. You're not really utilizing these programs uh, in the way that a lot of self-directors, self-directed traders, like to view their accounts, looking for you know the big home run right out, right out of the gate. These are really uh, meant for so slow growth, uh, so they're they're really intended for longer-term investments, and, and they're not intended to uh, to be timed, uh, so to speak. And last question, I keep putting you on the spot here, but uh, as far as taxation. It, it, is it different than like if I was trading it myself, or is it treated the same? No, nope. no, nope. treated the same way. Okay, uh, but you know there there are some things that you can do as a futures trader, um, you know, to get some some benefits out of the tax. Um, the guys at the IRS, and um, you know, we have a, a speaker coming in from one of our IRA administrators uh, on a webinar 
next month that's going to talk about trading through an IRA. Uh, you may consider opening a, a corporate account uh, for the tax advantages. Uh, right off the bat, you know, as a, a futures trader versus um, you know, a, a stock trader or a bond trader uh, in the cash markets, you know that 60% uh, of your returns are, are taxed as, as long-term capital gains and 40% and as ordinary income. So just that alone um, is, is treated the same way whether you're self-directed or part of a, a CTA program. Okay. Uh, I don't see any other questions that we haven't already answered, I think. Um, cool. Well, uh, you know, what I would say is we, we did have a lot to cover here, and, you know, we're really excited about the next year. More than anything, I think we're excited to, to see your excitement uh, in terms of the new services and products that are available through Miris, uh, and we're really happy to be able to offer them to you. And uh, you know, if you have questions about anything that we discussed today, uh, feel free to, to get a hold of us. Uh, our contact information is up there now. Um, and if there's anything that uh, that you feel that that you want to you know, tell us how we're doing, we, we welcome that as well. Uh, you know, we really want to listen to to you guys. A lot of the things that we did this year, like the addition of RJO, um, server side OCOs, uh, the mobile uh, platform, that's all um, you know part of our overall plan. But really, it's it's demanded by our customers and, and we really respond well to to our customers needs uh, sounds great I, I do see one uh, final question on um, opening a managed futures account is it are there are there any type of differences between the restrictions on where you open it like you know certain provinces of Canada and et cetera or is it the same as the regular account same account uh, requirements um, you know nothing nothing with that will change okay um, and generally speaking, you can um, you can open at any clearing firm that we offer. Uh, some of the CTAs actually execute their programs with Miris using our network, um, so it might be better for you to open at one uh, clearing firm versus another. Uh, but Dwayne will have the best information for that. Uh, okay. You know, at, at when you want to get started. Um, awesome. So uh, if someone emails in right there, info at mirrorsfutures.com, can they just put, like, attention Dwayne or attention Bob if they have particular questions for one of you guys? Sure. If they're currently working with a broker, reach out to them. The, that's, the, you know, their best resource. Uh, if you have just some general inquiries, uh, you can reach out to our info at mirrorsfutures.com, uh, and we can make sure that it gets to the, to the right person um, to, to address your questions. Um, Great. Other than that, uh, you know, Mike, I, I really do want to thank you for having us in the room. Um, My pleasure. I appreciate uh, all you guys do for the for the community, and uh, everyone I know always speaks very highly of you. So it's it's nice to have someone like you around. So really appreciate it, and, and thank everybody out there for for attending and sticking with us uh, until five central. <laughs> well, hey, I, to, I told everybody it's going to be a very detailed, uh, you know, in depth presentation and I think we delivered on that so absolutely all right guys so thank you very much Bob really appreciate it and for everyone else thank you for being here if you have further questions right there's the phone number and the email address and uh, if you want to rewatch the recording I'll be posting it uh, on BMT sometime tomorrow thanks guys thanks Bob thank you <laughs>